I'm just so like <sighs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be really freaking exciting. I'm a little hopped up on caffeine and a little hopped up on excitement. I'm sure you guys can tell by the title of this video what it's going to be about. Colourpop is releasing two brand new products to their brand, to their line, and it's makeup brushes and concealers, two of my absolute most favorite things in the world. I love complexion products and I love brushes so much. I'm sure you guys can tell by my extensive brush collection how much I love brushes. I literally got this package at my door today not too long ago and I knew I needed to sit down ASAP and film a video on this. I haven't swatched anything, I haven't really played with anything yet, so this is going to be a first impression. The way I'm going to do this video is since I have no makeup on my skin right now, I'm going to test out the concealers in a few different ways and I'm also going to do a full face with only the brushes and the kit because Colourpop says you can create a full face of glam with just this brush set. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to be swatching all the concealers on my arms so you get a really good idea of the colors. I'm going to try to be as thorough as I possibly can. But yeah, with all of that said, that was a lot of talking, <laughs> let's just get into the video. So before we get into the demo, a few things about this concealer is it's called a no filter concealer, which I really, really like the name. And it's going to be retailing for $6.00. That's pretty crazy. I think that's a great price point. Makes me just even more excited to try it out because if this is amazing, $6 is a bomb price. This is a lightweight, creamy, dreamy formula created with soft, blurring pigments to give you the most flawless matte finish. Glides on like butter, giving medium, buildable coverage. Feels comfortable on the face, lasts all day long, and makes your face look airbrushed. Like the name says, no need for a filter with this concealer. That sounds pretty dang exciting, if I do say so myself. So this is what the packaging looks like, and I for one really like it. I love the colors, I love the simplicity. It's very, very cute. The actual component has a white cap. It's not shiny, it's kind of matte, and it has silver details on it. This has about 4 grams, 0.14 ounces of product inside, which I was looking at other concealers. For example, the Shape Tape has... 0.338 fluid ounces, which is a lot more than the ColourPop one. And my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer has 0.22 ounces. So again, this has a lot less than other concealers I have, but for $6, I still think that's a really big steal. And really quickly, I wanted to add that the applicator is amazing. It picks up so much product and applies beautifully. With all that said, let's get into putting some stuff on our face because I'm really excited. For a quick little priming action, I'm going to take the Colourpop Amethyst Priming Spray and I'm just going to spritz a little bit on my skin just to give it a nice little prep. On the left side of my face, I'm going to take the concealer on my bare skin and I'm basically going to cover up underneath my eyes any scarring, any blemishes, basically my whole face. So we get to see what the coverage, the formula, and the texture is like on bare skin. And on the other side, I'm going to apply a thin layer of foundation and I'm going to use a lighter concealer to kind of highlight and see what it looks like on top of foundation. And then I'm also going to take a darker color and do some contouring. So let's get started. I'm basically just guessing which color is going to match my skin, but I'm taking a light 20 for this side and I'm just going to start applying it. I'm going to start with underneath my eyes first. Oh, wow. That is really... That is really creamy and pigmented. Holy moly. I gotta say, I'm not really detecting any scent either, which is pretty nice. I'm noticing that it does oxidize a little, so you can see the difference of the concealer colors. We shall see what happens. I'm gonna take a very damp beauty blender and I'm going to blend out underneath my eyes first. It blended out amazingly and very, very quickly. It does have a medium coverage. It's not emphasizing my lines. I mean, I do have natural lines underneath my eyes, but it's not making it look dry and cakey. Actually, it looks really, really smooth. I really like the color, too. It might be a little bit brighter on camera, but in real life, this looks really almost like my skin tone. I'm going to take a little bit more underneath my eyes and kind of build it up and see what happens. And I'm just going to go in one more time and blend it out. Second layer is on and it does not look cakey whatsoever. It built it up really nicely. It's not emphasizing any lines, but I can tell there's a little bit creasing underneath my eyes already. But that's only because when you put your under eye concealer, you need to set it immediately so it doesn't crease. Because a very creamy product and you have a lot of wrinkles under your eyes, naturally that's going to happen. So it's not the concealer's fault. I have lines on my face. But you would definitely want to set it as soon as you put your concealer on. But I'm going to go ahead and do some spot concealing on my face. 
Got a bunch of blemishes and scarring everywhere. Some redness around the nose. Like I said, basically my entire face. Again, using my beauty blender, gently tapping out the concealer. As I'm blending this out, I can definitely tell that it's covered really, really well. You can still see some of my stubborn scarring because I have really, really dark scars. My redness is completely gone and it looks absolutely flawless. I low-key want to wear this as a foundation. If I went in with one more layer, I can get away with a very beautiful skin-like coverage. Oh my god, I really love this. I'm going to go in with one more light layer on the pesky blemishes. So there we have it, concealer done on this side and nothing on that side. Not gonna lie, kind of living for this as a foundation as well. I don't even think I'm gonna put foundation on here so we can see what happens to it. On the other side of my face, I'm going to quickly add a layer of foundation. I'm using the Stila Stay All Day Foundation in the shade Bare. I know I look a little crazy on this side, but I promise you it actually matches my neck quite well in real life. I'm taking a lighter shade of the concealer. This is two shades down. This is Fair Neutral 10, and I'm going to highlight underneath my eyes and just anywhere I need it. I'm going to go underneath here, a little on the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, tip. And then I'm going to blend this out. I can't get over how effortlessly this blends out on the skin. It doesn't look cakey whatsoever. Like they mentioned, it is a medium buildable coverage. You can definitely go in with more. But generally, I wear medium to full coverage foundations. And I don't need too much. Just a little bit brightening and spot treating. And I think this would still do the job perfectly. I'm pretty happy with this side of my face. I think it looks really, really good. I do need some color in it. So we're going to go in with some contouring before we set our face. I'm going to take the shade Deep Tan 55. I'm going to use this to contour my face and see how it acts as a contour concealer. And with my beauty blender, I'm just going to tap it into my skin. This is kind of a fail on my part, learn from me. First of all, the shade is way too warm for me, and also I put a little bit too much. These go a very, very long way, super pigmented, and especially I don't have foundation on this side, there's nothing for it to really blend into. So I think I'm gonna take the lighter concealer again and just clean it up a little, but I'm gonna try to fix this mess now, but right back. I am rocking a very healthy tan on this side of my face. I went back into the shade Light 20 and I added this to just brighten and fix the contour mishap, but I think it actually looks so good. The contour is still a little bit too warm for me, but overall, you guys, my skin looks beautiful. I look flawless. It has a very nice satiny matte finish and is very smooth, very poreless. Like I'm so happy with the way it looks like on my bare skin. So for this side of my face, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a lighter shade and I'm gonna take Deep Beige 45 and I'm also going to contour this side just to kind of even up my face a little bit. I'm going to learn from my mistakes and apply a very tiny amount of this. This side of my face definitely came out a lot better. You learn from your mistakes, things happen, we're rolling with it. The color looks beautiful, it blended out very nicely, it looks like a very soft, natural contour. The finish of it looks absolutely gorgeous. So you guys, I'm kind of like really hyped about this so far. So this is the side of my face that I have only the concealer on. I have absolutely no foundation. You can see it does not look dry, it doesn't look creasy, it's not cakey. I haven't even powdered it, so I think this looks freaking amazing. You guys saw that I have blemishes and scarring. I don't know. I really, really like it. And for this side, this is the side where we have our foundation and the concealer on top. These are the brushes, and I'm digging this faux leather baby pink case that it comes with. It says ColourPop right here. I think that's adorable. It's like a wrap style, so you just unravel it and open it up. All the brushes are inside. I believe, I don't really know too much about the brushes at this moment, but I will try to update my description as much as I can. I'm not sure how much they will be going for or if you can get them separately or it comes in a kit only. Um, I will definitely update you guys, but for the most part, this is the brush 
set. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use as many of these brushes as I possibly can to finish up the rest of my makeup. These are super soft synthetic fiber brushes, so they are not real hair whatsoever, so that is awesome. I really like how these brushes look white handle with silver accents. It says ColourPop on it, but it doesn't seem to say anything else on it, so it doesn't say a number or what the brush is exactly for, which I personally don't mind because all my brushes are multi-use brushes. I use them for whatever I want to use them for, but if you are somebody who needs it to tell you what to use it for. It doesn't say that, unfortunately. This is a large powder brush, obviously, and I'm gonna use this to set my face. I'm gonna go in with my Pop Beauty Velvet Powder in the shade 1 Fair, and I'm just gonna lightly dust this all over my face. This brush picks up a lot of product, which I really like, but I was not expecting that. I'm gonna take the Angled Face Brush for my bronzer. I'm using the ColourPop palette that came out in the Sand Collection. This color I'm gonna use to bronze up my face like I needed on that side, but it definitely picks up a lot of product, these brushes, which is really, really nice, but you wanna tap it out just in case you have too much product, especially for bronzer. I really, really like this. I'm actually kind of picky about the brushes I use to contour with because it makes a heck of a difference on how it goes on, and I already know that I'm going to be using this tons. That is really good. As you guys can tell, that was very effortless. For my blush, I'm gonna be using the ColourPop Pressed Blush. This was in the Nectar Collection. And then I'm gonna be using that with the blush brush. I'm just gonna take a little bit, tap it out, and let's apply it. It also really depends on your blush brush, on how your blush goes on too. Sometimes it will go on really, really patchy. This is actually blending out beautifully. So far, I'm like super impressed. Like everything is going on really nice. For my highlighter, I'm going to take the ColourPop Gimme More Highlighting Palette with the ColourPop Fan Brush. And on one side, I'm going to use a fan brush, and on the other side, I'm going to use another brush. So I'm just going to take a few different shades in here because I, I like mixing them. And let's pop this baby on. I don't really use a lot of fan brushes because I really like dense brushes to apply my highlighter because I feel like it just goes on a lot stronger. But this is actually not bad at all. Oh, wow. Okay. And on the other side of my face, I'm going to use the small fluff brush to apply my highlighter. This brush definitely picked up a lot more product, so this is going to go on a little bit more blinding, I feel like. Woo! Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I am digging it. This is a really good brush for highlighting. So this brush is going to be very, very loved in its new home. This is a really good brush to highlight with. Holy moly. This next one is the angled brush, and I'm actually going to use this to fill in my eyebrows. I used to fill in my eyebrows with a powder or a gel with an angled brush all the time. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some powder. This is the Brow Gal Convertible Brow Palette in the shade 2. This is a really good angled brush. It's like very, very thin, and it's not too floppy, and it's not too stiff. I think it's actually quite perfect. So now I'm going to move on to the eyes, and this is not going to be any type of eye tutorial. This is a very simple look. I'm using a lot of neutral colors that I always use. This is kind of like my favorite ColourPop neutral shadows. So first color I'm taking on the medium eyeshader brush is called Hear Me Out. It's just a matte nude shade, and this is going to go underneath my brow bone. I always love starting off with a shade under my brow bone with a flat brush. Love flat brushes, and this one seems to be working out quite well. Now I'm taking this blending brush into the shade Bel Air, which is a very soft matte brown, and this is going to go into my crease. This is not super, super fluffy. It's kind of a little stiff, a little bit fluffy, kind of like an in-between. Um, it's definitely depositing a lot of color. I would probably go into maybe something a little bit more fluffy for my crease, so hold on. So this one right here is the Tapered Blending Brush. It's a lot more fluffy, so I'm going to definitely try this one out. I'm going to take the same color, Bel Air, and let's pop that into the crease. Oh yeah, this is working a lot better because I really like diffusing this first color. With a larger tapered blending brush, I'm going to take the shade Cloud9, which is a super dark matte brown. And this is going to go into my crease. I'm finding that it works really nice to diffuse a soft color into the crease, but this darker color is applying a little bit like wonky, only because it is a little bit too soft and fluffy. I think I'm going to try to go in with the smaller blending brush and see if I can blend out those edges a little bit better. I'm going to the larger blending brush with the shade Note to Self, and I'm just going to help the darker color blend out by kind of placing this on top. 
It's definitely blending out beautifully, diffusing the color, but I feel like it's maybe taking me a little bit longer to blend out the eyeshadow than maybe another blending brush I have. But they are really soft and they still get the job done but maybe just a little bit more time. Now I'm gonna take the pencil brush. This is gonna go into top notch right there, tap it out, and I'm gonna place this underneath my bottom lash line. Oh yeah, I definitely like this brush a lot. It's dense enough where it's putting down a lot of pigment and eyeshadow, but it's not too hard. It's soft enough where it's actually diffusing and blending it out as you are applying it. So I definitely really like this brush a lot. I'm gonna take the same pencil brush with Cloud 9, which was that really dark brown. And I'm also going to apply this underneath my lower lash line. And lastly, I'm going to take the small eyeshader brush and I'm going to take a super shock shadow. This is in Sundance. It's a new shade to ColourPop's collection. And I'm going to see how this acts with a super shock shadow. I'm going to take a little bit on my brush. And I'm just going to pop this on my lid. Um, I'm going to do the other side with my finger and see if there's like a difference, if maybe it's better with the finger still or with a brush. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the shadow on my finger, just like that, and I'm going to pop this on my lid. You know what? It pretty much looks exactly the same. Definitely have more control and it's more precise using a brush. So if they're going to definitely look the same, I'd rather just use a brush so I can get a more precise application. I kind of went a little bit too high here, but for the most part, that looks pretty dang good. So I went ahead and finished off the look with some mascara and lips. On my lips, I'm wearing the ColourPop Blotted Lip in the shade Candy Floss. I love it so much. The color, the formula, everything. So that is pretty much every single brush used except one. I cannot believe I forgot to use one brush. I really thought I used everything except this one right here. This is the stippling brush. This is actually a really nice brush, and I'm kind of sad I didn't get to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the concealer on my chin, and I'm going to blend it out with this because I feel like I need a little bit more cover-up right over here. I'm going to take that concealer on this really, really pesky blemish, and I'm going to take the stippling brush, and I'm going to tap and blend. Ooh. Oh, wow. I'm kicking myself for not using this brush to blend out my concealer in the first place. Ugh, <sighs> Jess. I'm also going to take this brush with my pressed powder and I'm going to tap that onto the blemish as well. I'm actually really digging this brush. I like it a lot. So now that I've used some of the concealers on my face and all the brushes to do my makeup, I'm going to go ahead and swatch all the concealers down my arm so you guys can see all the colors and I'll be right back. Today, I'm going to give you a quick little run through with all the products and how I still feel about them. I'm going to start off with the concealers first. I have a few pros and cons with these. I'll start with the cons first. I don't have too many. The first one is the cap. It is kind of like a matte white cap. It will get dirty. Mine have already gotten a little bit, you know, concealery and foundation-y from me using it, my fingers, things like that. I know over time they're going to get even more abused looking. I personally don't mind, but if you're very particular about things like that, just look out for that and the last con is it does oxidize but once it does oxidize and it actually oxidizes quite quickly um, it doesn't anymore it happens but that's another thing to look out for this side with the foundation you can't really tell it just blends in with everything but on this side i can definitely tell the moment i put it on my bare skin it like oxidized really quickly 
But yeah, for the pros, you guys, I really love this concealer so much. As you guys saw, I use pretty much the concealer all over my face as a foundation on this side. And it looks absolutely beautiful. My skin doesn't look cakey. It's not clinging onto any spots. It doesn't look dry. It doesn't look heavy. It's not creasing under my eyes whatsoever, which is amazing. And on the side where I used it with a foundation, again, looks beautiful. There's no creasing, smooth. I don't know. I just really, really like how it looks on the skin. I'm very, very impressed. I will leave a little note in the description down below on how it wears at the end of the day. It is about 6.30 p.m. I'll try to wear my makeup for as long as I can, and I'll let you guys know how it kind of like wore till the end of the night if you guys are curious. But for the most part, you guys, two thumbs up for the concealers for me. I think they're awesome. For $6, I think they are top notch. And lastly, for the brushes, for the most part, I loved every single brush in here. These face brushes are amazing. I'm definitely going to be using those tons. The eye brushes, I really, really like too. The only minor, minor con that I have is the blending brushes took a little bit extra time to really blend out, but at the end, I have a very blended, diffused, flawless eyeshadow. So, you know, it does take a little bit work than I'm used to, but they did the job in the end. So that's my only little complaint, I guess. Overall, everything else was amazing. Love, love the little brush holder. It's gonna be perfect to travel with and your brushes won't get dirty. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I have a big feeling it's gonna be very lengthy. So I hope you guys don't mind. I just wanted to cover everything I possibly can and give you guys a very detailed review. Thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Makeup by Jessie. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. I appreciate it so very much and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.